Hi, everyone. Welcome to Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast, where I share lesson ideas, songs, games, and inspiring things for your elementary music classroom. My name is David Rao, and I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. This episode of the podcast is a replay containing the audio version of a Musical Mondays live video. If you're not familiar with Musical Mondays, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live on Facebook and Instagram to share about the lessons that I'm using in class with my students. I give a recap of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then do a deep dive about one grade level and share the books, instruments, songs, and process that I use to teach the lesson to kids. This podcast episode contains all the audio from the Musical Mondays video, but if you'd like to see a replay of the video itself, you can find a link to the archived video on YouTube when you click the link in the notes for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here's the show. Hey everyone, Uh, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm excited to be sharing tonight because um, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about digital lessons, and I know that there are a lot of folks who are still trying to figure out how to be teaching digitally, how to do some of the distance learning stuff. So tonight I actually want to demo some of those lessons um, and give you some ideas of things that you might do, some tech you might use, um, some resources you might pick up along the way that might help you out in that process. Before I get to that, I just want to share, as always, if you have questions or comments, please leave those in the comments for this video. If you're listening to this later on a podcast or watching it on YouTube, you can always leave those questions or email me at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com, and I'll try and answer those for you. But it's so nice to to have all the folks who are here live so that you can answer each other's questions or uh, comment to each other, and um, it's just fun to see that happening so we can be more of a community and not just me talking to my phone in my empty home office. (laughs) Um, If you do have questions about resources I share and I say something about on the links page, um, on my blog there's a a page um, under the the videos tab where you can see all of the links for all the things that I talk about in these videos. If you don't want to search on makemomentsmatter.org to find that, on my LinkedIn profile on Instagram you can click, there's a link there, and on Facebook at the bottom of the comment or the caption for this video you should be able to find that um, links page. One more thing, um, <clears throat> well, a couple more things actually, well, but one, one thing is um, if you want to continue the confirmation, conversation and get more ideas as the week goes on, um, there's a Facebook group called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community and you can join that group and get ideas and resources throughout the week. Um, I, I think a lot of folks have, have had some great conversations there this week and it's been really fun to <clears throat> just chat and get ideas from one another and share with folks and, <clears throat> excuse me, Anytime that I um, find a resource that I think is really cool um, or something that would be beneficial, I try and post it on that page. Okay, so two groups were my guinea pigs today on the Every Moment Matters group. Um, I posted how this last week um, I had been able to get together with some friends through Zoom and how much fun that was and how nice it was to sort of share ideas and get... um, chance to sort of talk back and forth and bounce ideas off one another. And I shared in that Facebook group um, the idea of like, could we do that as as a large um, online community? And folks were really excited about it. So today there was a group at 1030 and one at 130. Um, And it was just a bunch of us in a Zoom meeting, which is a digital meeting platform. And we just chatted about things that were working or things that we might want to change or um, stresses and things that we might have experienced and it was just so fun and refreshing to like see people in person <laughs> so um, if you want to get in on that um, I'm doing two meetings every day one at 10 30 one at 1 30 and you can just go to on the links for this p- uh, day on the links page you can sign up for that um, there's a sign up genius page for that um, or on, if you're in the every moment matters Facebook group you can scroll through and find the sign up for that um, but it's free if you want and it's just a group of us getting together to sort of you know, have fun, drink coffee, and talk about what we're dealing with as music educators, especially doing digital stuff. Um, so if you want, you can sign up for that, and the link is for that is on the links page. It's also in that Facebook group. Okay, so one of the things that I was talking about with um, folks today in one of those groups, and I sort of said this near the end of our meeting, was what's something that's making you happy? What's something that you get to do now that you haven't been able to get to do? Because a lot of times I feel like we're focusing on Uh, maybe the things that are stressful or the things that are difficult or the things that 
make our job in life a little harder. And it's so much fun to talk about the things that are bringing us joy and things that are um, fun. And I talked about how I have been playing piano daily for the first time since probably college. <laughs> and um, it's fun to like do scales and to have time for that. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that. Um, and to just pull out pieces from college and pull out things um, and, and go through and play those a little bit, which is, I think, just such a fun experience. I've been doing like crazy on Duolingo. My Spanish score is way up, so that's fun. Um, and someone was sharing, well, actually several people were sharing. They're like, well, you know how I always said I was going to learn how to play ukulele. I'm actually doing that now. <laughs> and so um, there are folks who have pulled out their ukuleles and are working on that. And I think that's amazing. Um, if you are someone who's like, I, that's a great idea. I should get a ukulele. I should finally just do it and um, buckle down and actually try. <clears throat> that's awesome. I think you should. Um, ukulele is not tricky, especially if you're going to use it as a tool where you teach in the classroom. You only need to know like C, F, and G. <laughs> and um, you don't even have to know those particularly well. They're, they're pretty easy to play. It's very fun. Um, so I'm encouraging everyone to go get um, a ukulele and try it out. Now, um, I usually am the person who's like, Amazon's so easy. But um, I've been talking in some of these music fan groups about how you're getting things and how resources are working and what would you do if you were in school? And one of the things that has sort of, well, come up in groups and crossed my mind was, uh, how are our music vendors doing? Obviously Amazon is doing great right now because they're one of the big vendors where like they have two day delivery, like awesome. But what about those vendors that consistently pay for presenters at state conventions and consistently give me a discount when I email them and ask, hey, can you give me a discount on this class at ukuleles? Or those vendors that I know I can always turn to and trust and say like, hey, I have a question about this instrument or do you have a replacement peg for this, whatever. And so that's why I'm, I'm gonna say, if you are interested in getting a ukulele or a book like um, this great book, um, uh, Carl Orff, The Shoal Work, or this great book, Elementaria, or this great book, Discovering Orff, or this great book, uh, Step It Down, any of these great books that'll teach you to be a better teacher. Or if you're thinking about like, let me get a ukulele and let me learn how to play. Don't go to Amazon. Amazon can lose a couple sales on ukuleles. Go to West Music, or go to Music is Elementary, or go to that music vendor that always helps you out. You don't need to buy from Amazon this time. They won't miss your sale. But West Music and Music is Elementary and a lot of those music vendors who really depend on end of your school purchases or the hundred recorders that you were gonna buy or whatever, they are, are I'm sure, looking for sales and would really appreciate if we as a community would look to them for those resources because they're the ones who are always there for us. So I want to be there for them. So on my page, my links page, um, let me just show you. I have uh, put on the links page um, a list of things that you can get from uh, West Music and MIE. And guess what? West Music has this thing that says, 15 products you had no idea you needed. <laughs> and I already made my list, and guess what? Some of the things that were on my list were on their list. That's pretty funny. Um, one that you're definitely going to want to get from Music is Elementary. There are these really fun We Rose uh, Cricket. I don't know if you can see that. Sorry, Facebook and Instagram. Um, Cricket and Pig We Rose. And oh, my other favorite thing from Music is Elementary right now is this brand new book. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, right on the top, Elemental Ukulele. It's an amazing book. Um, it is perfect if you are sort of uh, ORF inclined and want to figure out how to incorporate ukulele. Gosh, I cannot figure out how to zoom in on Facebook, sorry. Um, but I have a whole list of ideas, things that you might want to use or books you might want to get or resources. There's a, a really great book from my friend um, about how to write grants to get music resources. Uh, for my friend Ashley. It's a great book. You can get it from West Music or MIE. But this is the time to say like, hey, I'm going to go get those resources. I'm not going to buy them on Amazon because Amazon's doing just fine. I'm going to get it from West Music. I'm going to get it from Music is Elementary. I'm going to get it from Rhythm Band or wherever your store of choice is. Go to those music vendors who have every year supported us 
and go support them. So that's on my on my page. So ideas from West, you can get a ukulele. You can get, ooh, this amazing. I take this to every state convention and at every convention uh, people come up, they're like, what is that? It's this fun little bell instrument. It clicks, it's very easy. You can wear it on one hand so your other hand can like, you know, do that to kids who are having troubles. But it is amazing. So I can like, if there's a, um, a group of instruments playing a Bordeaux off on the side and I have to dance that time, this helps keep them in beat if we need to. Um, it's fun for echo playing. There are so many things you can do with it. It's called a free chihuahua, F-I-R-I-K-Y-I-W-A. Um, if you get the free chihuahua and a ukulele, you get free shipping on West Music. It's a really, there. it's like $49 or something for, um, for free shipping on West Music right now. Um, so free chihuahua ukulele, there's a grant writing book, there's Discovering Orf. Um, MIE, they have Elemental Ukulele, which is featured right now. Their guiros are so much fun. And then I also highlighted a couple books you might like. There's this like, it looks like the the um, the frog guiros or frog rasps or whatever you want to call them, but it's actually a whistle where you blow into the elephant's trunk and it whistles. <laughs> so that's going on my purchase from Music is Elementary. But I know things are tight and tricky for a lot of us, but if you do, if you are thinking like, let me go buy that ukulele and invest in myself and my practice and who I am and as a player, or if you think like, I'm gonna go get that mandolin or whatever, I want that book to, to learn from while I'm here sitting at home, um, go to West Music, go to MIE, don't go to Amazon. Amazon doesn't, they don't, they won't miss one or two sales. But um, it, it really will affect West and MIE if we support them now. So. Think about it, go and get something. I have a list of ideas on my website that might help you out. Okay, so tonight I'm gonna to share um, uh, several different lessons. I'm gonna give you actually sort of the rundown of what I do in those lessons. Um, Facebook, I think I figured out how to flip the screen so you can see things as they are actually written. I hope you can actually read this. <laughs> I think I finally figured that out. Instagram, there's no way for me to flip it. I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to learn to read backwards or watch this video in a mirror would help. Um, but I'm going to try and show you some of the resources and actually how that I use how I use them in these distance learning lessons. Um, so I want to get to some of that. What sort of things do you teach? In the last couple of weeks, I've talked about that. Um, I'm really excited in these lessons with students in distance learning to be able to engage them with new things that maybe I don't have time to get to during my normal lessons in, during the year. So um, teaching about new genres, um, exposing them to the symphony, um, using videos that are um, exciting and relevant for them. I'm, I'm sharing all of that with them. Um, I have a couple lessons coming out on my um, lesson idea website, which is digitalmusiclessons.weebly.com. Um, about world music and how you can use um, this chance to teach kids about different cultures around the world and how music is vital and important in their cultures and their lives. Um, There's some really cool resources from the Smithsonian, um, from Folkways and other places that I'm going to be sharing in the next couple days. But I'm using this chance with digital learning through videos and through um, quick lessons to be able to teach kids about those genres that I don't really have a lot of time to do during the normal school year. And that's something I'm really excited about because now I get that chance and I, you don't always have that option. Um, and so there's that website, digitalmusiclessons.weebly.com where you can get, see some of the things what I actually post and share with kids. Um, and you can copy, steal, borrow the ideas. You can get the direct links and all the things that I use there if you want. That's a free site, digitalmusiclessons.weebly.com. And that's on the links page too. One thing that I would really, 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 really encourage you to do, and I've, especially in, in talking with people this week, um, is, and hearing their stories, the thing I would encourage you to do most is to get in front of a camera and share with your kids. Because I think a lot of us are like, ooh, I don't wanna, like, I don't wanna listen to myself sing, or I don't wanna look at myself, or I'd rather just play a video. And I think that that's natural. But what I'm finding is that most kids, um, are craving that connection. And so to place yourself in front of the screen and show a video of yourself, um, it, it's such a wonderful connecting activity to, to connect with those kids who are 
coming at us from a distance. And so um, what I'm doing, uh, like I, I did a couple read alouds and things where I just showed the book. I got an email from a mom saying, my kid knows you just by your voice. And I was like, that's crazy. Number one, he's a kindergartner. He's only had me this, just this year, but okay. Um, and then I was like, I really need to get myself in front of the camera because what's really cool is you do get to connect with all of those kids they do get to see you singing they do get to connect and remember like i remember seeing you at school i mean how how often do you like see a kid at the grocery store and for the next two months they're like i saw you at aldi i'm like i remember so how cool would it be if you know we're here um on this video and there for months or years they'll be like i remember when you sang that song about the hen Right. Yeah. And what's really fun is those kids who are um, the kids who are especially reluctant. This is their chance where they have no other kids listening to them. No other sort of outside thing where they can really focus on you and just making that connection. And it's it's not as scary for them. So it's a really cool chance for you to to get in there and connect with them. So. Um, okay, and what can you do? Read alouds are awesome. Um, you can, it feels a little bit like Blue's Clues or Dora the Explorer to be like, okay, everyone, let's sing this song. I'll sing, then you sing. Hello, how are you? It's, it feels a little bit like Dora the Explorer, but like Dora the Explorer works. Blue's Clues works. There's a reason that those shows are on the air for as long as they are because that process works. So, steal from those things that we know the kids already are used to and sing and give them a chance to sing back. Like it, it's a thing you can do. Um, so sing with them, just go for it. Be goofy. Kids are used to you being goofy. So if you are like super stoic now, it will feel weird. Um, just be you and have fun. Um, singing, playing instruments. Um, I see that some people said some schools are telling them just to review. Well, maybe with math facts that works, but guess what? We can teach new songs because you know that a kid, if you release a video, the kid's gonna watch it like 17 times. So by the time they get to number 17, it'll be review. So just go for it. And I, I don't think any principal's gonna be like, wait a minute, you didn't teach I Had a Rooster before this, how, you know, uh, this is a new song. They don't, they don't know. <laughs> they won't care. So just go for it and teach whatever you want and, and use this time to develop relationships with kids because it's, it's easy to do that and to use this chance that feels a little bit like we're losing this opportunity. Use it as an opportunity to make a connection through a digital medium. Okay, so to do that, I have a list of ideas. Um, I made an Amazon wish list, ideas list, um, where you can get things to help you teach these lessons. So for example, um, connected to my iPhone right now, I'm going to pull it out, um, is this little microphone. It, it's, um, by, it's a brand called Movo. And um, it's cool because it has actually this little auxiliary connection that just plugs into some phones. But if you have an iPhone or more recent iPhone, you know that won't work. So mine actually came with this little um, lightning to auxiliary connector, but not all of them do. So you have to just check that when you're ordering. But when you plug this in, it makes your iPhone or iPad or whatever it is, it gives it a, just a better microphone for better quality sound. So that's something that's um, great to add. You can also do like a big microphone like this, or if you have a microphone like this, you can use this, but it's not as easy to plug like into a phone. It's better to plug into like a computer. Usually it has a USB connection. Um, but, and these are a little bit more pricey. Um, this one I think runs about 65 or something. And um, the little plug-in one that I have here is like maybe 20 or 30 or something, but it really does significantly, um, it significantly improve the sound. One other thing, sorry, Instagram, I'm gonna move you here for a second. Um, one other thing that you can get, and I have this listed, is a tripod. Tripods are not expensive. This one was 12-ish dollars. I have it linked on my um, links page. The tripods are very inexpensive. They're easy, sorry, <laughs> sorry Instagram moving around. They're really easy to use. Um, you wanna make sure that it, um, if you're gonna use your phone to record, you wanna have a little um, phone holder and um, those are easy to find too. I link those on the links page. All of this stuff, it's, I mean, if you get a tripod and a 
a phone holder, that's not the word, and a microphone, it might set you back $50, $60. You don't need any of this stuff, but if you want it, it does improve the quality um, of your videos. I'm gonna plug this microphone back in. It's something to think about if you wanna have a little bit higher quality video. But what I would say is I'm not using my computer to record, I'm using my phone because the camera in my phone is better than the camera in my computer and so it gets me a higher quality picture. Why does quality matter? For me, I'm, I'm actually like waking up and like dressing like I would be at school and like combing my hair and stuff because when I make these videos, I want them to be a little bit of higher quality because I, I know that my kids and a lot of their parents and whatever are gonna be watching them. But also I know that like if I wanna save the video and reuse it later for a substitute teacher lesson, or if we have to have um, you know a snow day next year and I wanna be able to use um, the video again, I, I want a nicer quality. So I am putting a little bit more effort and time into the video itself, using the tripod, using all of that. Um, on the links page, I also have, uh, there's an, an iPod or an iPad stand that you can use that, that basically is a tripod for an iPad, tripod for iPad. Um, the only thing for the one that I have on the links page is that you have to take the case off to make it fit. Sometimes, you know, stuff like that comes up, but you can always, you know, try and see what works or you can just, you know, prop up your phone on a book or something. Um, but but these things might help you make a little bit higher quality video and that's on the links page. There's an Amazon ideas list. Doesn't mean you need to buy it from Amazon, you could buy it from anywhere, um, but it's on that page just so they're all sort of collected in the same spot. Um, and those are just some ideas of things that you could use if you wanted. Um, I also have, and I'm gonna be showing you just a little bit later, some things that I'm using on my computer. And I'm, I'm actually doing recordings of the screen. You could take your iPhone and like point it at the screen, um, but you could also um, screen record. And I have four videos linked on that links page. One is how to screen record on a Mac using QuickTime. One is how to screen record on a PC using this thing called Xbox Game Control or something. How to record on another thing using another thing. How to, there are like four or five videos on there of how to screen record if you want. The one thing I would say if you're gonna screen record or if you're gonna use um, something on your computer to record, um, I learned this lesson the hard way um, after I recorded a video um, on my old brick of a computer from school that um, if I don't wear headphones when I'm doing a screen recording and there's sound coming from the computer, it double records it. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it, um, it messes things up. So you might want to have some headphones handy um, because like I said, I, I looked on how to do it on my PC. I have Macs at home. So I wanted to share both options for you. That's why there are tutorial videos for both on the links page. Okay, um, let's see. I feel like there was some other thing. Oh yeah, a couple of video advice things. Um, I would say do short videos. Don't do a video of like, I'm gonna do my whole first grade lesson 40 minutes. I'm just gonna do the whole thing. Because what if you press record and then like get really into what you're doing and some reason that the phone stops recording and it's you don't realize it until it's 20 minutes later. Well, you just wasted 20 minutes. So I do really short videos um, and I do like maybe five minutes because also, you know, kids like to watch short videos. And so um, I have in a lesson, I'll maybe have five, like five minute videos. So I record short videos, not long videos, um, so that um, kids can sort of get through them a little bit quicker. But then if something happens, I don't have to stop and I haven't wasted 20 minutes. Or like if I, you know, the dog runs in or the power goes out or whatever, I, I've not wasted 20 minutes in a video. It's only been three or four minutes in that that might happen. So do sh I would say short videos. If you wanna be really fancy and like edit them together to make a really long video, cool, but kids are okay with you having like, I did this at home on my phone videos. They're fine with that. They like that. They they might notice a difference in you know production quality maybe, but maybe they'll just be excited to see you. So um, don't feel like you have to like get into big fun iMovie or editing software or anything like that. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You can just record yourself and kids will be happy to see you. Um, I would say dress up. 
I mean, not really like dress up, but like if you want to reuse this video later or if you don't want your kids to like see you in your pajamas or whatever, like, you know, clean up a little bit. It's a nice reason to be able to do that, right? Um, and then it's okay to make mistakes. If you start a song in the wrong key or you flub a chord on your ukulele or whatever, that's okay. Kids don't care. <laughs> I mean, they're seven-year-olds. It's not a big deal. So, um, those, those are just some ideas for if you are recording um, to help you out a little bit. I saw a couple quick questions here uh, that I want to address before I move on and share you share some lesson ideas. Um, okay. Someone said the microphone is super nice. Need to hear the difference. Emily said that. That's great, Emily. I'm glad that it, it is a nice microphone and it's really not that expensive. So that's sort of fun. When you use your phone to record, is it on selfie mode? I know my front facing camera is not as good as the regular one. My iPhone, the, the FaceTime camera is good enough, but um, I, if you wanna turn around and use the other side, you can too, but it really just depends on what you wanna do. Um, just, But like I said, that's why it's nice to do short, like five minute videos, because if you have the phone turned around where you can't see and you like press record and run around and do your thing, and then you get back to it and you realize, oh, it didn't record at all, then you don't, you've only lost five minutes, but, um, but yeah, so I, that's another reason I like to have it facing me so I can always see, is it actually recording or did it stop, whatever. Um, so that's something about recording. And then headphones with a mic attached. Yeah, you if you're doing something in your computer and you have like earbuds or um, something else where the microphone is part of it, just try it out. Try it, you know, see if it's better with or without and, and then make a, make a call there. But um, but it's, it's nice to have those options. I just have a couple sets of like earbuds that are the old ones that like I know I've gone running with. The microphone doesn't really work anymore <laughs> very well. So just test out your mic before you do a lot of recording. Um, play a cup, you know, talk into it for 10 seconds and then stop and listen to it, see how it works. Okay, I wanna share a couple actual lesson ideas. And I know that I'm not gonna have time for all the things I planned, so I'm gonna get through as much as I can. Um, I wanna share a lesson I'm doing with my younger kiddos. Um, and this would be probably kinder or first grade. And I'm just gonna be goofy and share with you like the actual lesson, like you're my kindergarten students. Um, and you might see that there are some elements that are like fancy and some elements that are not. Um, but if it were me, I'd probably start out um, a, a video. If I'm doing like four or five videos for a lesson, probably the first video is me with our school mascot, which is uh, Wilkie the Wildcat. Hey Wilkie, how you doing? I'm great. Are you having a good time today? Mm-hmm. What'd you do? Well, I did some homework, like math and reading and other stuff. You have homework You have homework too, Wilkie? Yeah, everyone does. Oh, great. But now I'm ready for music. Yeah, I'm ready for music too. You know what? Um, Wilkie and I, when we had a little break earlier, um, we went outside and we went and we saw some cool stuff outside. Wilkie, do you remember what we saw? Dogs. Yeah, we saw some dogs. You don't really like dogs, do you? Yeah. And what else did we see? We saw bluebirds. Oh, yeah. I remember a song about that. Maybe we'll sing that song later. Let's see. Um, what else did you see? Mm, mm, cars. Yeah. Uh, ooh, I think I, I know some songs about cars. We could do some songs about cars. No, 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 no. Mozarelle. Do you remember the thing that we saw that was the most annoying thing of all the things in the whole outside? What was that? Bees. Oh, yeah. There were bees, weren't there? Everywhere! Everywhere there were bees! Do you know why there were bees? No. Uh, well, there are bees because now's the time of year when bees love to come out. And it's because there are so many things that are growing right now. And you know, bees love to fly around um, in the things and go to uh, the flowers and find flowers because they're looking for nectar. And then they sometimes, um, they run into some pollen and bees just love being outside. And for the record, I am, I am so sad I left my bee puppet at school. If I had known, I was gonna do this lesson. Or if I had known I needed to take all my puppets home, I would have brought them all home, but I didn't. Um, so, but uh, anyway, there are bees out. And guess what? I found some bees that came in um, and I, I was able to bring them in. Now, um, here are my friends, these bees. Look at these bees. Oh my goodness. There are so many different kinds. I see a blue bee and a green bee, an orange bee, a pink bee, and a purple bee. Now, you might be saying, David, what is this super high-tech thing that your bees are hanging on? This is some old mailer, like some, I just needed something flat that I could tape the bees to. I am not high-tech. 
right now because whatever i'm at home I, I I had this like fancy like wall hanging from Ikea with like all these beautiful letters on it. I was like, ooh, I could use it. And then I was like, no, the kids don't care. They don't know what this is. They don't care. It's not a big deal. Don't feel like you need to make it perfect or beautiful. Um, just go with it. The kids will have fun with the story. By the way, these bees are, they're freebies. <laughs> they're from Teachers Pay Teachers. I put the link on the links page, but they're free. If you want, you can download them and print them out too. But oh my goodness, I have these bees, a blue bee, a green bee, an orange bee, purple bee, and pink bee. And as I was outside, I saw all these bees, and you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of this poem. And the poem goes, bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout, I say, you are out. And you know what? A bee flew into my house and I went, I say you are out. And I shushed him out the door. I like, you know, I waved at him to try and get him out the door because I don't want to be in my house. Did you hear what the bee did to the man in the story, in the poem? Listen again. Bee, bee, bumble bee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I say you are out. And I shushed him out the door. I pushed him out the door because I didn't want him doing what happened to the man in the story. Did you hear what happened that time? What happened to the man in the story? It stung him on his knee. Did you hear that part? Ugh, if they stung me on my knee, my knee would hurt. That's why I think this time, I'm gonna, when I say the poem, I'm gonna pat my knee. Cause you know, sometimes if you get hurt, like your mom comes and goes, it's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna pat my knee this time. And I'm gonna pat it with the beat. Can you pat with me this time? And we're gonna pat together and I'll say the poem. Here I go. Bee, bee, bumblebee. Stung a man upon his knee. Stung a pig upon his snout. I say you are out. And you know what? That I don't think the pig would like it very much either. If we had a pig here, if I had my pig puppet from school, if we had a pig here, I think the pig would not like it either because it says it stung the pig upon his, do you remember the word? Rhymes with you are out. It's his snout. And if you don't know the word snout, snout means nose. So it stung the pig on his nose. Ugh. You know what we could do though? Instead of patting our knees, we could pat our nose. Let's try it. Here we go. Bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I say you are out. Wow, that's fun. You know, um, I don't like the idea of getting stung on my knee or on my snout. Um, maybe we could sting somewhere else. Where do you think we could sting? Oh, I know. We could sting on our heads. Let's pat on our heads this time as we do the poem. Bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I say you are out. That was fun. Where else could we sting? Hmm, I can't think. What's another place we could sting or pat? Hmm. Ooh. We could pat our hand. Bee, bee, bumble, bee. And so then you're like, oh wait, there's, you know, instead of patting my hand, we could do this. We could clap our hands. Let's try that. You could do that for you know several minutes, right? There are a lot of things you can do going on to the, the next part of the story. But then eventually I'm gonna say, you know, I, there's too many bees around and these bees are buzzing. I don't know if you can hear them, but they're buzzing. And you know what? I think I want to make a game out of this because those bees stung me and I think I want to sting right back. Watch this. Bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I say you are out. Bzz. Guess what? This bee just got stung. He's out. Bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I say you are out. Bzz. Guess what? Bye, purple. Now I'm down to three. Now I do this a little different. I do stung a man upon his snout. 
you are out. And then I sting the next one. Because when I play this game in my classroom, I actually do three sting. I do, you are out. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I do four stings actually and then I, I get more kids to sit down this is usually a game we do in a circle and it's like an elimination game until we're down to one kid and then that kid gets to walk around and be the stinger I shared about this lesson in the fall it's a lesson I do with my first graders in the fall so if you want to see the original lesson how I do it in like a circle you can do that if you want to go back and watch that but if I'm doing it with these bees I might just sting one or I might just go I say you are out and then sting that same one or whatever I don't know but it's gonna end up with Ooh, my super high-tech scotch tape came off. Oh, and then I'll probably end up with, in the end, you know, I go all the way through, one B. Well, guess what? That B went on a little journey. <laughs> going all around um, my yard. And it was going around my yard because, oh, look, another super high-tech. <laughs> Super high tech whiteboard. I know you're very impressed, probably Facebook and Instagram land. Okay, so um, he found my yard and he was very excited because guess what? In my yard, there were things that he really liked. Flowers. And they were sort of all over, not just in one place. They were all over, oh my scotch tape is sort of coming off, that's great. They were all over the yard. There were flowers everywhere. And the bee really, 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 really saw one far away that he was very excited about. And it was a, it was a red flower with a blue stem and he really wanted to get to that um, flower. But he had to choose his path carefully because, I lost all my, here we go, sorry. Because there were things in the way and even though he was a smart bee and he could fly pretty well, he had to do his path pretty carefully. So here was the, back, the path that the, my bee took. It went down and around and up and over. And then he eventually ended up at the new flower. And he went like this. And he ended up at the flower. Wasn't that exciting? Can you make that buzzing noise with me as I go along the path? Uh-oh, I lost part of my path. Can you do that with me? Try with me. You know what? That reminds me of something we do in music class. I, I think it... I think that it, it sounds sort of like when you use our voices. Can, can you use your voice to do this path? Instead of going can you go woo 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 and go woo high when it goes high and woo low when it goes low? Try with me. Oh my goodness, how exciting. But guess what? The bee followed me into the backyard and in the backyard there were different flowers and he saw another flower that he was very excited about and guess what it was in a it was a, in a different place and there are all these flowers sort of in his way here is my bee way over here you know, i'm gonna make i should be more strategic about this hold on and this very special new flower had guess what pink and blue petals it was very exciting and the clip art for these flowers is also free on Teachers Pay Teachers, and I linked it on the, on the links page. And now my bee has to take a new path. Oh my goodness, he has to go up and over the red flower and down beneath the other two flowers before he can make it to the final flower. And so, I mean, you could go on for as long as you want with this, but you can connect the bee, bee story with the flower story and it becomes vocal exploration. It's really easy to, to connect things like that. Both of those sets of clip art were free on Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, and you can, you can turn it into a vocal exploration. You could do another B song if you wanted. There are lots of options for this if you want. And then um, I also have a whole set of vocal explorations that I could do. Whoops, not here. Um, let's see if I've got it here. lost way back here no somewhere else i don't know where it went but i have a digital vocal exploration that i could do with the students too if i wanted but that's just one way that you can just be silly and have fun and introduce real life elements of things that they're going to see when they go outside things are blooming there are bees outside they're infesting 
my fence. So I know there are bees around. We have carpenter bees. They're terrible. But it's just a fun thing you can do that connects with what they're already doing. For my first graders, this would be review. For kindergartners, it would not. It would be new, but it would just be fun. The, the poem would be new, but the vocal exploration we've done a lot. Let me show you a couple more that you can do. And these are things that you would do maybe on the computer. I wanted to give you a couple examples of those. Um, so I'm gonna move the tripods here and turn the cameras around so you can see this hopefully a little bit better. So sorry about all the moving. Okay, welcome to the other side of my chair. Let me try and turn this around. Uh, there's Instagram. Let me try and turn Facebook around. Oh. Let me see if I can flip this. There we go. Okay, so for my older grades, I might do something like this. This is a favorite folk song kit that I already have. Um, and I and it's the cool thing about it is when I'm teaching in a classroom, I can use all of these slides um, as sort of a, a digital entryway, giving them more information and um, context about the song. So if we're doing Cluck Old Hen or My Old Hen, depends on what you call it, I can go through and I can do a screen recording, which means that I would start like, I'd actually like press play there. I, like I said, there are those tutorial videos on, on my links page about this, where this is exactly what the kids would see. And you can create a video of yourself going through and it can get the audio of you actually saying things. So what I would say is my old hen, our favorite folk song of the week. And if you don't know what a folk song is, look on this page, it says, what is a folk song? Well, a folk song comes from a specific country, region or area. That's why we say that this song is regional. Maybe you've heard about the regions of the United States when you're in your class with your homeroom teacher. A lot of classes learn that in third grade or fourth grade, depending on what state you're in. <laughs> and I would go through, oh, oral tradition, explain a little bit about that, maybe about different versions. I could talk about this song was originally written down in Texas. And some people think that it was created in Texas, but we're not exactly sure because we don't know who the um, original composer is. So we're not quite sure. Some people call the song Cluck Old Hen. It's a silly song about a hen and it started out as a fiddle tune. It might've been played at dances or other social gatherings. And it was first appeared in print in the year 1886. And the cool thing about this is that it gives the kids a little bit of context. You could talk about what a hen is instead of just chicken. It's not really interchangeable, but it's sort of, you know, you could talk about the words. You could talk about a fiddle. Um, you can talk about clucking. You can talk about, oh, this is a fun page because it talks about in other countries. Um, people have the, the sounds written down a little bit different. Um, and some people say kata kata and some people say cut 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 and some people say cluck cluck and they're just it's fun that you can talk a little bit about that and laying eggs and you could talk about oh this is cool um once we go through the song we talk a little bit about buck dancing um and buck dancing it was this type of dancing it's similar to clogging and it's a kind of dancing where you move your feet quickly and you add a percussive element to the song that's been played and this is a type of dance it's an appalachian tradition so in this, in this set, I'm able to go through and explain a little bit more. There is a printed out page so or, or a, a page with the notation. So if, if I were going to do this song with kids, I'd maybe do a quick four or five minute video about the, um, about the song itself, giving a little bit of history and a little bit of context. Then I might do a front facing video that's looking at me and I might sing the song. And, you know, my old hen's a good old hen. She legs eggs for the railroad men. Sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes enough for the whole darn crew. And so um, we, I, I would go through and I do that whole thing. I might add some actions. And the cool thing about this, then it, um, down further on, there's a whole page with links. And on that links page, you'll find links to things like this. Let me see. I think I pulled it up here. Yeah, so... Um, this is a special kind of dancing that happens in Appalachia. Um, it's originally sort of where it's from. And so this is one of the videos. And if you listen, she sort of sings, but not quite. And she does a special dance. One, two, three, four.
So this gives them a little bit more context about what this kind of dancing is. And it's fun that it's actually the song um, that, that we learned in the class, right? But it's fun to be able to add in those actual elements about where it comes from and give more context about that. There are some other videos linked there. This is uh, Steve Martin and Noam Pickleney playing on banjos. <laughs> Great show. I mean that. It was a fantastic show. So jump ahead to them actually playing. So you could have a quick talk about a banjo. So if you spend time talking about the original song, if you sing the actual song, you could then also have questions or time to talk about how does this sound like that song? How does it sound different? What do you hear that, that sounds like the original song? Because the, the girl, the dancing girl, the way she sang it was not exactly the same way I sang it. And so it gives them another, another chance to sort of see that. Here's another example of um, buck dancing. This is a like a national grand champion buck dancer or something, he explains buck a little bit. Buck dancing is an American dance. It kind of goes back to the roots of our nation. It started when dances moved here from Northern Europe and the British Isles. They brought their dances over, the settlers did, and then they also mixed in with some African dances like the Jumba. And what you've got is buck dancing, or some people call it flat foot dancing. And it's an old dance. Uh, clogging came from buck dancing is kind of the origins of it, and it shares a lot of the same roots as tap dancing. Tap dancing is also a similar dance, but the rhythm is really different between the two. So I want to demonstrate some of it. I'm going to demonstrate some old-time buck dancing for you right now. <laughs> So this whole video, he goes on and dances. Lots of little dances, and it does sort of zoom in on his feet too. So, I mean, this is a chance for you to use, I mean, you can go back to um, the, the song itself, you can talk about the song, you could run back to the song, you can use this as a, a springboard, this favorite folk song set, to, to launch you into videos, to launch into singing. You could even do a thing where at the end of the song, you do a little echo body percussion. You could add in a B section, do that. There are lots of options, but I like using this. And then at the end of each of these sets, there's a media links page where you can go and see a video of it or a video of something that relates, um, stuff that goes like that. That's something that I would do a screen recording of and I would link in the screen recording of this set with a video about buck dancing or a video of Steve Martin playing the banjo doing the song or something else so that you can have those connective moments. Another thing that I'm sharing with my older grades is the Note Neighborhood and this is something that we use for um, for notation. So as we're going through, this is something I would use in class. Well guess what, we're not in class anymore so I'm still doing it um, but I'm just I'm just doing a screen recording. So as we go through, this is sort of the narration you'd hear. Hi there, I hope you all are having a great day. I'm about to walk over to Dion's house. His house is right down the street, but let's be careful going by this next house. In fact, I better put on my rest disguise, just in case. I don't want my sassy neighbor to recognize me. All right, now I'm ready to go. Remember, if you see her, don't say my name out loud. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I see you. Hi there, did I see you a little while ago? My name is Half Note. People call me Sassy Half, I'm not sure why. This is my house. I think it's the prettiest house in the whole neighborhood. Isn't it pretty? Look, here's Ta, and Ta says, shh, just quietly back away. Pink is my favorite color, so I made it as pink as I could, inside and out. Hey. Wait a minute, where are you going? Excuse me, I wasn't done talking! You weren't trying to walk away, were you? So I, I honestly, I would just go through and do the narrations just like that. This is just a PowerPoint and um, on um, PowerPoint, you can actually record, uh, do a screen recording of just the PowerPoint and export it to a movie, which you could load to YouTube. You could screen record using one of the other options that I put on the links page. But I would just go through and I would talk uh, through the whole PowerPoint. We'd go all the way through. And this one is about the half note, the sassy half note. And um, her house sits on this thing called a lot. And the lot is bigger than other people's lots. In fact, it is the same size as two other houses in the neighborhood. It takes up two lots, which is why the half note gets two 
two beats. And so, I mean, this is just a, a, a fun way to introduce that, but this is what I would do. I'd go all the way through, I'd do the snapping, we'd go through, we would read along with them. And if I have my cursor here, you might be able to see it on the on your screen, but it's on my screen. Um, they can follow along, ta, ta, ta. And we go through all the way through to the end so that kids can see it. We talk about what a half note is, but this is again, just a PowerPoint that I would use in class. Now I'm just doing a screen recording of it so that the kids can still get that same um, exposure, that can get that, that same information that I would want them to learn if they were in class anyway. And it has a practice page um, and it's sort of a fun, fun lesson that, that we can go through in a digital version. But that is just a PowerPoint, and you saw I just went into slideshow and pressed presenter or, or presenter play from start or whatever, and I'm just doing a screen recording of that. Ooh, where did it go? Okay. Oh yeah, and then one more thing, um, using this time, it's a great time to do some. Um, fun sort of critical thinking skills. So another PowerPoint in this series, ooh, let's see if I can find it where I put it. Oh yeah, um, the bar line. So this is one where um, I do a whole lesson about the bar line. We talk about what a bar line is. Um, in the note neighborhood, the way to teach that, we, we, we've we read multiple things where there's a bar line. Um, oh, sorry, this one's about time signature. I lied, not about bar line. But they go to the amusement park and we talk about this sign here and how many kids um, can go on the, the, the ride. The time signature tells you, the top number tells you how many friends will fit together. See here it says four. And then it talks about that so that kids can sort of get the understanding of what a time signature is. And so um, we play with that, we do all of that. I would use this PowerPoint, I would do a screen recording of this PowerPoint explaining the bar line. Um, and then we would get a chance, this is sort of re a review, um, we'd get a chance uh, to do a worksheet. And so um, if I were able to send a packet home or if I had a download page um, where kids could download and try the, the worksheet, um, I would I would give them this screen recording and then I would do a recording of this. Let me see if I can turn my, I'm not doing so great with these, these <laughs> stands today. After I talked about, oh yeah, let's talk about tripods. Now I'm not doing so good with them. Let me see if I can move this a little bit. Oh, nope, that's not working. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Instagram. You're really getting, uh, this is the one tripod I'm not very good with. I'm better with this other one. Okay, so I would do a recording of, of this view where I'm looking down at my desk, and I would do something that, that in critical thinking world we call a think aloud. Um, and basically this is just me explaining the process to kids as I do it. So if, if we were doing the one on um, bar line, so there's this worksheet here, I would do basically this exact process. Let me just walk you through what I'd say. And like I said, this is sort of like a think aloud if you're talking about critical critical thinking um, terminology. And I would say, the worksheet says add in bar lines in all the correct places. Don't forget double bar lines at the end. Okay, well if I'm gonna put in a bar line, this signpost says four, four. That means four friends can fit in together. That's what the top line means. I remember that from the PowerPoint. And then the bottom line or the bottom number tells us what kind of friend gets the beat. And, and a four means ta, that's ta special number. So that means four things that equal ta can fit together. So I need to count, let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, so four can go together. So if I'm thinking these four go together, that would mean the bar line would need to go right there. Yeah, let me try, and then I need to keep going because I'm not done. I need to go all the way to the end because it says don't forget double bar lines at the end. So let me keep counting. One, two, three, four. Then that means I need, I need to put one right here in between these two. Okay, one, two, three, four. If, if there are more things, I'd put another single bar line here, but there's not, it's the end of our line. So I have to put in the double bar line here. That means two together. And I can make the second one a little bit darker if I want. 
Okay, I could I could go to the next one if I think I'm right. But you know what? I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna just check here because it has to be four together. One, two, three, four. And even though there's a rest there, a rest, it, it does count because it's a beat. It's just a beat of silence. So one, two, three, four. Okay, and that's where the barling goes. Good. And then one, two, three, four. Yeah, and the barling goes there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, the barling goes there. That's perfect. Okay, next line. One, it's, it's same time signature, four on top, four on bottom. Okay, so that means four go together. One, two, three, wait, four, sorry. One, two, three, four. I'd put a line right here in between because there's four. One, two, three, four. Oh, there are no more at the end. So that means I gotta put my double bar line. This seems silly, but walking them through this exact process helps the kids sort of troubleshoot and think on their own. If they're gonna do it themselves, this is giving them that exact process so they can see exactly what they're gonna do when they're doing it on their own. And so if I sent home this worksheet or if I were having them do this, um, working through with this think aloud, this is a really cool opportunity because I can give them what I'm actually thinking in my head. I can show them my process so they understand why I'm making the choices that I make. And this is something that happens in crit when we talk about critical thinking, a think aloud helps kids understand the process and understand how it works. And being able to use a worksheet like this that connects to something that we already did in a PowerPoint or in the note neighborhood, it gives them a chance to sort of um, make more sense of that information. So so I have worksheets for the bar line and I have them for uh, time signature so I could it's sort of the reverse process of counting the number of people together and then putting in the time signature this is just sort of a different version of that so if you are using my resources like the note neighborhood stuff or um, favorite folk songs or um, the vocal exploration slides or anything else like that if you're using something of mine um, you can post that on um, your school um, your school system, whatever you're using at your school to um, teach the kids. If you have a closed system like that where you can share those resources, you can share them with the kids. Ooh, let me turn this around here. Because I understand that, you know, we're all trying to get through the year and we're trying to um, find resources that work really well. So if you saw any of these resources tonight and you have them for my teachers my teacher store and you wanted to use them, feel free to make a screen recording or to make um, a video of you using it just so that the kids can get that content and information. Um, I would just ask that if you have something in mind that you put it on like, like a closed site, it's not just open to everyone forever, or at the end of the school year, if you just take that down at the end of the school year so it's not out there for anyone to, to take or whatever. But if, if you have like, you're going to email out to parents, you want to email out a couple of the worksheets, go for it. Or if you have um, a note neighborhood slide, you want to record yourself reading it go for it. Or you have one of the favorite folk songs, you want to record yourself using those slides and then sing the song, go for it. Because I, I think that the more we can include that this actual content that we would teach in our classroom, just finding a digital way to do that, the better off we'll be um, to use these actual resources that we would use in our classroom. Okay, I'm going to quick run through um, a couple questions here. Um, let's see. I see a lot of folks saying like they they think note neighborhood is silly. Yes, it is, but it, for some reason it works. <laughs> um, let's see. Someone said, "How do you flip the camera so things aren't backwards?" Um, that's just a Facebook Live thing that I was just playing with, um, and there's a way to flip that. But if you do a FaceTime video on like your your iPhone, when you're recording it, everything looks backwards. When you press stop, it automatically flips it for you. That's only on iPhones. Um, but there's, there's, it does that sort of for you because so, it knows that you're going to want the correct letters and words and things to show up. So Nikki and um, Heather, if you, if you record yourself with your FaceTime camera on your iPhone, it will flip things for you when you're done recording. Or once you click, you know, like, rec yeah, you take a picture, it'll flip that for you. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think there was another question here on Instagram. What program do you use to create the worksheets and slideshows? Like a, a lot of different things. <laughs> um, to, to When I'm using copyrighted clip art or images or fonts or anything, I have to secure all of that. So it's like a weird combination of 
Keynote and PowerPoint and Adobe and all sorts of stuff. It's sort of a weird process, but if you're interested, you can email me and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, if you have questions going forward, like I said, all this week, I am doing conversations with people every day, two times a day um, through Zoom. You can go sign up for those if you click my link in profile or my link on the links page um, and and you sign up for that. It, Emily just asked, where is the link? In in the caption for this video, um, it's at the bottom of that. It's also on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. If you click the video tab, it should be under Musical Mondays, recap 2019-2020. Or you can just email me and I'll, I'll send you a link to the links page. But if you have questions, join our Zoom meetings. It's so much fun to have those meetings with other people and connect and share ideas and just see other people. Um, and, and that's been so much fun. Or ask questions on Every Moment Matters Facebook group or send me a message or an email. My email is, email is makemomentsmatter at gmail.com. Okay, I hope this has been helpful. Um, I'm gonna be back next week for another Musical Mondays video, but you know how to find me if you have questions along the, uh, along the way. Good luck, everyone. And like I said earlier, um, if you're interested in advancing yourself and getting, um, getting better as a musician, think about going to one of our local music vendors, West Music or MIE, and getting a ukulele or getting that reference book you've always wanted to use or discovering more for something like that. Check out one of those local music vendors. Don't go to Amazon. Amazon doesn't need our sales, but our local music vendors do. Okay, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, have a great night.